Welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I'm joined by my friend Jason Edwards of ProLogic's Practice Pads. Jason, welcome. Hey, Bart. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. For sure. Uh, it's good to have another Ohio guy here, always. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I think this is neat because uh, I think everyone in the drum world is aware of ProLogic's. They know how you know great they are and the quality, but maybe people don't know that it's uh, that you you have a 20 year old company, which is quite the accomplishment. Well, thank you. It's I'm um, thankful to have made it this far 20 years. We're celebrating. T- yes. 20 years this year. We started in 2001. Yeah. Interesting. That was a crazy time here in America. Kind of like now. I mean, you have the 2001 in September was obviously I know there was a lot of I've, I've, on other episodes. I've heard about shortages of supplies and things like that after 9-11. So I don't know if that, uh, affected you but that's kind of a heavy way to start the episode (laughs) right well back then we were very small obviously i was just the one-man operation and uh because i was teaching a lot during the week and playing on the weekends Um, so really how this began was a need for a better practice pad and feel because i spent so much time studying all the master hand technicians uh, of, yeah. our, of the past and of the day. And I felt the need that there just need to be a better surface to it that I could enjoy practicing on, you know? So yeah. I started researching, uh, different materials and just, you know, began putting things together from sourcing things out of, uh, in the local community of Akron, which is the old rubber capital of the world. I didn't know that. You have Goodyear, BF Goodrich, all the tire companies. Wow, were based interesting in Akron at the time. We're known for our our pigs here. Was, this was Porkopolis here in Cincinnati uh, nice. back in the day. So I want to say too that like just overarching is is I mean we're going to talk about them, but your time with Jim Chapin is is very important, um, which which we'll talk about. So if people are Chapin fans. Um, with the molar technique, we're going to get to that too. But I, I want to back up a little bit. And when you're teaching lessons and stuff, what were some of the practice pads that were you were using? Like, what was the problem that needed to be solved? What did you find early on that was that was like you know material, shape, all that stuff that was you sure. were liking? Um, yeah. So in our lesson rooms, they were all like. I first off, I taught at a an amazing drum shop. Uh, it was called Zampino's Drum Shop in North Canton, Ohio. It was founded by Phil Zampino of Canton, Ohio. Yep. And we had an amazing group of people there who taught lessons, and it was a great hang, uh, amazing environment, great experiences. Um, and what we had in our lesson rooms were, you know, back then the standard Remo pad, which was the tunable gray mm-hmm. practice pad, and the rims yep. would always weren't very durable. They would chip away. The pad would lose tension and it just was like, you're eventually playing on a, on a, I don't know, like a dead piece of material after a while, a a sure soft, you know, pillow type of thing. And you needed some rebound to practice your buzz strokes Yep. and all the fundamentals of this, of strokes and different velocities that we use. I felt it was important to provide that and offer that in a practice pad. Um, also, yeah. at the time, there was the, the real feel pad. We had some of those throughout our practice studios as well. There was a good eight, I'd say, eight lesson rooms hmm. or studio rooms, if you call them, with two kits set up in each room and pad stations uh, throughout Zampino's. Cool. Um, a lot of students would come through the door. And I was teaching every day, probably 45 students, 50 students a week. Wow. How old were you at that point? I, I took lessons there from probably eighth grade on. Uh, my teacher eventually left when I was just almost out of high school. And so I was offered to take over for him wow. and, and teach. Uh, so I was, you know, 18 at the time. Nice. And then I taught there ever since probably up to 2012. Hmm. Um, cool. 25, you know, such plus years. Um, oh, nice. If that, worked out right so (laughs) anyways uh, yeah you know having those pads in those rooms and just kind of seeing the wear and the tear they were getting all the time and wanted to create something that was durable and that we all enjoyed practicing on and it was great because we had a lot of amazing teachers there i could whatever i was coming up with i would bring it in and share it with the teachers 
and get their mm. feedback, you know, and start, yeah. start that way. But those were some of the products, you know, that existed at the time, you know, before there were even other brands that, that are today. Today, the, the practice pet market is quite extensive. And sure. Yeah. Which is awesome, but it's, uh, it's there are a lot of, a lot of brands out there. So there are, but that's true with most of the, yeah. Yeah. And that's true with a lot of the drum world is it's not, I, there's a lot more, I guess it's cause you know, um, manufacturing and stuff, people can do it more and experiment and it's gotten easier for people to get into the market. Um, or maybe globally it's gotten easier for different countries to, to have pads come in. Um, but that's so cool that you, you saw it and, and you did it. So, so you're a pretty young guy at that point. I, yes. Like you said, you're you're in your garage. You're out there building these these experimenting yes. with materials, and that's amazing. So really, I I started tinkering around with uh, products in 1996. To hmm. be honest, I was selling drum pad mutes. We had all back then, you know, the uh, real feel drum mutes that laid on top of your drums. They were kind of they would wear through pretty rapidly. So we used the material on top, and they were blue. We you know, sold those as drum use just in the shop. Hmm. Another product that I actually made back then too was uh, dowel rod sticks because the hot rod sticks came out at that time. And I felt that they needed to be rounded on the dowel rods on the ends and things. So I would had a little sanding machine. I would sand all the edges nice. of them, round them off, package them together and sell them wow. in a drum shop. But the pads were the really the primary, uh, became the primary, obviously, product line for ProPrologix. Um, at the time. Yeah. Were you ProLogix from the beginning with that name? Was that just something, was that, you know, or did you go through some different names and stuff like that? That's a great question. <laughs> yes, you go through many names. Um, yep. I wouldn't say many, but several. I was, we had Chops Percussion. Uh, that was my first in 1996, cool. you know. But it was like, well, that's that's a general name. We need to maybe think of something else. I had Image 2 Percussion, like almost the the word image with the number two kind of yeah. you know yeah. 90s um branding <laughs> yes. and i thought yeah. well i want something that needs to be timeless and so mm -hmm. professional and logical as far as the two words coming together and i created prologix with an x on the end Love and it. that's how prologix name came about and then we trademarked that in 2001 wow yeah so um all right, so then uh, now let's also help me with the timeline here. Um, uh, you said you were experimenting with the practice pad in 1996, um, but and I know you created an awesome you and Andrew Capazello, who works with ProLogix, who is a friend and who's been great, and he suggested uh, Mark Riley for a tattoo uh, drum episode, which was great. Right. Um, but I've got on your timeline that you basically started in 1999 with uh, Mr. Jim Chapin and. You, yes. my friend, uh, we have a mutual friend, Barry James, who's a great teacher, who has said that you and I've heard I think I heard you play a little bit at PASIC doing that kind of like practice pat like you had your little booth set up in the, <laughs> the lesson area. Barry says you are really one of the finest students he's ever had as a player. Um, well, so I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Uh, it's so on that note, you learned a lot from Jim Chapin. You are a ambassador to his technique and all that stuff. So. um Obviously, you hadn't really incorporated, you hadn't become pro Logix at that point, but I'm sure you were, like you said, tinkering with um, practice pads. But why don't you talk a little bit about the parallel of you working with Mr. Chapin and um, and also kind of, I feel like simultaneously you were creating your own brand, right? So how did that Correct. go? Correct. Lessons with Jim. Yeah, so I was studying out of the advanced concepts for the Modern Drummer book by Jim Chapin. And in the back of the book, was a phone number and it just with his with his address and everything, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna call him up. Nice. I'm sure why not? This here's <laughs> his phone number. Yeah. So I I make a call. Uh his wife answered the phone at the time and um I introduced myself. I asked if he was gonna be coming through Ohio anytime soon and she said, Let me put him on the phone for you. And so we spoke and he actually put me in contact with a manager of his who lived in Nashville that at the time and i can't remember what his name was unfortunately sure. but what jim did was we 
had him come visit and take or give lessons at San Pino's. And so when he was doing that, he was actually staying with me at my house. And we, I would just constantly kind of pick his brain and ask him questions. Boy, is he a great storyteller, uh, mm -hmm. amazing memory. And he would tell stories of, from Buddy Rich to Gene Krupa to, I'm sure we've all heard a lot of that before from Dom's uh, conversations as well. Yep. And uh, that was a great episode. Check that out. If you yeah, thank you. Go back and listen to that. Yeah. And so I was always uh, fascinated with hand technicians and he was one that I saw him, you know, on the speed power control and endurance video, which I still have today, the VHS tape. I really wore that tape out. So what I would do is I would be up late at night after my lessons with the pads downstairs and just running that video and, and working on the hand technique and, and rewind it, play it again, rewind it, play it again, stop it. I would slow down and work on the motions that he was explaining and just really watch myself and pay attention to the detail of the stroke and the motion mm -hmm. and the flow that happens when you're working and you know practicing this molar method uh, that he taught and so by you know just doing that i thought well that's why i called that number and jim came to town a few times you know and taught at the drum shop and he always had out most of these uh the outfit was a white shirt and a green jade pants usually <laughs> <laughs> that he funny. would have on and he would have cigars coming out of his pocket. You know, oh, it's like boy. smoke cigars. Yeah. Um, but anyway, a great gentleman, true gentleman, ex excellent, amazing educator and musician. And hmm. at his age, I was watching him play and I'm just like, whatever he's doing is working and it's really working well. And he doesn't have any, um, you know, injury or anything wrong with his hands. And he's just able to keep up and keep going. And so I feel that that's what I really need to focus on. And so I just yeah. spent hours and hours and hours and years, uh, hmm. a couple years back and forth with him. He would come, you know, every, maybe for three years to the shop and, and we would just still catch up, tell stories, go over the same hand methods. And so through that, yeah. I, at that time I was making these pads and I was making them, they were in, a nonagon and I wanted him to try one and let me know what he thought of it because obviously he's a hand expert and understands the what it takes to to practice and I want him to give me some feedback on what I was coming up with so I had a practice pad it was double-sided still have one here one of the first ones I made um, I had him sign it as well for inspiration just to stare at it all the time <laughs> and yeah. I gave him one to take with him. And I said, here, you take this, enjoy it. I appreciate everything. And it was a natural rubber top from Akron uh, that I, this place I would go and buy the rubber material from hmm. MDF nine sided. The reason I chose nine was because a snare basket has three arms. And so that's smart. I wanted it to fit snugly in the snare stand. That was something else that I didn't see too many other pads to, that were, you know, back in the day able to do because other pads would be hexagons octagons decagons and so but not the nonagon i don't think i've ever said nonagon in my life but right. uh <laughs> you got the you're the nonagon guy <laughs> <laughs> that's right so what i did is I, I i gave him the pad and i just you know in travels he would uh he was obviously a real feel actually endorser at the time i asked him if he wanted mm. to be a prologics endorser but he wasn't able to to do that but he did accept the pad as a gift and went on his way and we would see each other quite often at PASIC every year, and uh, we would hang out and uh, literally, again, just kind of trying to pick his brain, seeing what he's doing with his hands. He would introduce me to people, um, and then often at night we would go up to his, he's like, let's go up to the room, you know, and mm -hmm. we'd go up to his room, and I'd have some other friends with me, colleagues from the drum shop, and we would all go up to this hotel room and sit around, and he would get the pad out. He would actually one of these times we did that, he put the real field pad down, reached in his suitcase and pulled out the pad that I made. Nice. 
And I was like, what are you doing with that? He's like, well, <laughs> I like this one better. <laughs> oh, boy. And so I was like, wow. And I just had kind of goosebumps on the back of my neck. Well, sure. why do you like it better? It's like, oh, I just enjoy playing on this one more. And uh, I feel it has great rebound. And you really need to do something with this with these pads you're making. Hmm. And I thought, all right, well. I, that's the man that tells me that I, that's, and yeah. you know, he knows what he's talking about and I'm going to see it through to see what I can do with this. And I, so I founded the name ProLogics and we started making practice pads and I would sell them at Zampino's drum shop to my students. And some of the teachers there would then start selling them to their students. And then we would just go from there through other shops, maybe in Ohio, Columbus percussion, uh, they're still working with them. Right great dealership, Jim Rupp and the family. So, and it just little by little, I'm thankful for, you want to grow a, a business. And when you're growing something from the ground up, you can't just think you're going to sell thousands and thousands of products <laughs> right away. It takes no. patience. It takes time. It takes a lot of effort and sacrifices. Dedication. And dedication. Now, let me ask you though. Things. So while you're, so when you're at the moment where Jim is pulling out of his bag and going, I like yours, kid, um, <laughs> were you selling them at that point? Or were you more like giving them to a, like, you know, like, like almost like a door to door salesman kind of like, Hey, check this out. This is my pad. Or right. did you have more than like two made? I mean, what was your like production level at that point? Was it garage and you know? Yeah. So there was still basically essentially the garage I would have, you know, a facility was die cutting the material out. I had, I was doing the woodwork. I was cutting those out by hand with, uh, with the jigsaw, sanding the edges, mm. um, you know, finishing the product, gluing them together, um, basically putting them in a poly bag at the time and selling them at the shop. Hmm. Um, wow. That later turns into, okay, well, I can't keep up with all this right now and do the, the work eventually as things started growing through local dealers in, in the state. And then outside of that, by carrying this around at PASIC and trying to, uh, you know, get business through as the internet was coming along, who on the internet had shops, you know, what, what drum shops were creating e-commerce sites. Mm -hmm. I need to go talk to those people. So through that, that's how the business began to grow even more. But in doing so, you have to start to outsource. I didn't have a CNC router in house. I didn't have a die cutting machine in house and, you know, assembly team so you have to outsource your product and raw materials for others to do but at a quality high quality that is mm -hmm. and deliver it to you and 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 trust and and those yeah. are things that are very important in developing a business and growing it from the ground up but again i want to just stress to do it slowly and take your own pace at it because I was teaching, I was playing, I was doing other things. It wasn't like I just said, hey, I'm going to, I started the business, I founded it, but I had to, you know, paying my bills by teaching yeah. and playing and not by selling practice pads at that time. Yeah. Unlike today, it's reverse, but for sure. <laughs> and I'm thankful for that. But yeah, th that was um, at the time, you know, with meeting Jim, you know, and having him come to visit and, and, and do those things, it was, it was important um, to move forward with that and then seek yeah. out the, the outsourcing to make it, take it to the next level. I mean, it's, it's reassuring. You want your, I don't want to say like your idol. That's not the word I'm looking for, but he probably was your idol. A mentor. Mentor. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To, to say, cause he'd probably be honest and go, this is, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't, I, I don't like this. Maybe you should, you know, you're a great player. Stick with that. Right. But he didn't. He said, this is good. You should stick with it because um, it's come up in, a, in pretty much most of the uh, teacher episodes where the really the really great teachers are honest and they don't, you know, um, pat you on the back too much and go, you're doing great, even though you're not. So it seems like Jim would his honesty when when they are honest and it's good, it's it means more. You know what I mean? Like it's to be truthful and say, this is awesome, man. You're doing you're doing great. Um, so. That's cool. And while we're on Jim, I, uh, on the timeline here, you, it says that he sat in um, on a band with you. Is that right? Yeah. So he was in town one of the years and uh, I was playing, I played a gig in town in, in Kent, Ohio. I was playing with Patrick Sweeney band 
And we played every Monday night for three years. Hmm. And also in the band at one time was uh, Dan Arbach of the, oh, cool. the Black Keys. But we can yeah. chime that a little later. But cool. yeah, so we were playing a gig and he asked me and we get out of the car and he's like, hey, is it okay if I bring my pad up? Because he carried it all the time. I mean, we all yeah. know that, you know. So I said, sure, you know, just you can play in the back or if you want to do some stuff, but just kind of watch when we're playing, you know, a, a tune or something. So anyway, we're, we're in the a slow blues, just 12-8 blues song, and I'm playing the groove, you know, boom, dun, 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 dun. All of a sudden, I can hear it. I'm like, what the heck? I look up, and he's sitting at the front table up there with Pat Sweeney's dad, showing him the Mullers. The Mullers truck. Awesome. So, wow. We took a break, and I said, "Hey, hey, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah." I said, "Hey, man, you gotta. We gotta put that in the car, man. I can't. We can't." He's like. I go, listen, do you want to come up and play? He's like, sure. I said, okay. So he goes up and did some of his tunes. He has a CD back then that, that I think Real Feel HQ Percussion put it out. It's a lot of storytelling and some mm. songs he did back then. And so it fit the bill. We had a, it was just a three piece blues project that we were doing. So he just said, hey, you know, play in this key, we'll do this. And he sang. And we're in a college, oh, we're wow. in Kent, you know, his college is packed yeah. like all every Monday. And the people went crazy when he was singing yeah. and did a drum solo. And I let him, he wow. did a couple songs and uh, awesome. it was amazing time. I'll never forget that. Uh, yeah. So, My dad went to Kent. Um, nice. I think for a year he went to Kent and then went to back to UC to since university of Cincinnati here. But um, yeah. Wow. That's awesome, awesome. man. I, it, it's it's funny. Of, you had to be like, okay. Put the pad away. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so well, he's always, you know, always, that was him. That's Jim. He's always carrying that pad around pair of sticks. Just like I can play it right-handed. I can play it left-handed, you know, that he would play the book and do things with the right hand, uh, right symbol time. Then he would play the right symbol time on the left hand and do the same thing. And I was like, wow, I got to work wow. on that. So, yeah. Well, and, one thing you said earlier, real quick, is is just with the whole molar technique that Jim obviously is kind of a great, you know, spokesman for. Is you said, you know, he's he's clearly he's playing, he's older, but he's playing great. It makes me think of what Dom talked about, where you know he molar himself was taught by these Civil War vets, and that whole story of how these guys are like ninety years old and they're still, you know, playing great, ripping snare solos. So I guess that's a big part of the technique is not overexerting yourself, which Jim clearly had figured out right yeah exactly um as i said i his hands were very strong they were always relaxed uh he had a relaxed mm. you know method of playing and i just really wanted to be dive deep into that and and see what he was up to and then also other things that he was working on he was always writing and having ideas creativeness yeah. and uh we kept in touch you know for for a long time to, until his passing um so That's great it was uh you know, I'm, I'm glad I was able to be. Oh yeah, in the in the timeline there on that. So what a great gentleman. Yeah. So um, all right, where we left off with Pro Logics though was uh, you were selling the pads at the drum shop um in Akron, correct? It's in North Canton. Okay, North Canton. Yes. And um, but you obviously grew from there. So what was the next step in the? You know, because I like this because it's almost like you could insert any company and it's kind of a cool like uh, like it's not overnight. Like you said, you have to go out and do the the groundwork. So it's neat to hear how you kind of stepped it up a little bit and became, you know, the really awesome, successful pads you are now. So you go Thank from you. door to door salesman uh, selling at the drum shop, telling your students they have to buy them. Right. <laughs> and then uh, where do you go from there? Yeah, so really, it's all about networking. So I would go and attend PASIC every year, uh, sometimes the NAMM show. I always have a pad with me because I always saw Jim carrying his around. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I, if I want people to know about what Prologic's products are. I'm going to carry one under my arm, and I'm going to carry it out. I had a bag that I made back then for it with a, like a stick bag on the outside, but 
I would just actually put more stuff in that and to carry around the day and just carry the pad out in the open. Because after it was a nine sided pad, I started making it round. And um, what I also did was there was a point in time where I felt there needed to be a rim of some kind on the pad. And I had some sheet rubber actually made into strips like slit, like spaghetti noodles or, you know, Thai noodles, whatever, mm-hmm. and whatever noodle, whatever you're noodle you're into <laughs> and noodling around. So yeah, <laughs> I stood up the, I stood this piece of material up and I was like, yeah, it's going to work. It's going to, so I would glue the, cut it to length, glue the ends together, stand it up and I made a rim. Hmm. And I, I just glued that around the outside of the, of the rubber material. That was the main surface. And so that was what I was you know, carrying around around 2002 that, that started. And it was called a Logix pad. So we started calling that a Logix pad. Now, the nine sided one, we called that a Stardix pad. Mm-hmm. Thing I kind of start with the X here at the yep. end. So the Stardix pad was the nine sided pad, and the Logix pad was round with the rim. And what I also did when we had the nine sided pad in 2001, let me back up here, we put stand notches in the base of the wood. So the snare basket would grab the pad, hit those counterpoints where the three notches were. So when we made it to a round base, I kept the notches and they were all CNC. Now the wood's being CNC machined. Uh, Baltic birch, we're using Baltic birch now at this time because I wanted to have something that was strong and uh, withstand a drop or, you know, because a lot of the pads then were powder coated or just MDF or particle board mm-hmm. and things of that nature. So we wanted something to have durability, but also it created tone when you played on it because of being applied Baltic birch. It was about, we were using three quarter inch at the time. And w- one other point with that is that drums, drum shells have a, are plies. So I wanted it to kind of look like a drum shell from the side, um, but the plied construction. So yeah. what we did is it like, again, I would carry this around, find exhibitors that were at PASIC that were e-commerce very driven at the time and make relation, create relationships, pass out my card, show them the pad, let them try it out. And, you know, little by little, they would order some pads here and there, three here, six here. And eventually I had pads going around to all the top uh, drum shops in, in the country. And back then I, we had, there was a system called the five star drum shops, uh, which was like top level drum shops, a kind of a community uh, group that they created. And mm-hmm. Zampinos was part of that. Columbus percussion was part of that. And a lot of other famous shops throughout the country were part of this group at the time. So I was actually trying to access and get into those shops as well, because I knew yeah. they were premier drum shops at the, at the time, the small mom and pop shops, more or less. Um, that was my main focus there. And again, just making, sh- you know, getting into the e-commerce because I knew that would change was happening and you, I, you have to be able to go with the times and change and make it that adapt to the environment. Um, yeah. You know, so, uh, with that said, that's, that's how we started to, to grow as, as far as into a dealership network, you know, through yeah. attending these trade shows. It's very, which Im- really important. It, it, It's important and it speaks to your quality because especially in that five star circle, which is pretty cool. It's like the, uh, the inner, you know, I feel like we're getting the inside scoop on this circle of, uh, drum shops, (laughs) right? But like, they're not going to bring in a product that's falling apart or peeling or, you know, the glues coming off. So you don't go to the table with an inferior product. Well, it all comes down to trust, you know? Mm -hmm. And so by them physically seeing the product at the show and meeting me in person, I was able to build, establish that trust factor and, you know, they, they took it into their shops and passed that on to their students and same thing. So they grow from there. This episode is brought to you by dream symbols. Dream symbols creates B20 and truly hand hammered symbols for today's working drummer. Each handcrafted symbol has a warmth that draws you in at low volumes, yet thunders with beautiful overtones when leaned into and opened up. These symbols come alive with an explosive attack, but have undertones that are warm, rich, and dark. Each one has a unique, complex voice that will help you define your personal sound. 
The cymbals speak clearly at all dynamic levels and sit comfortably and easily blend in any mix. Head over to dreamsymbols.com or at dreamsymbols on Instagram and find out what your dream sounds like today. You were talking about e-commerce. Now, in 2002-ish, around there, early 2000s, was like musician's friend and stuff like that. Like, were you on like the major distribution, like, you know, big, big websites like that at that point yet? Not yet. That comes later. But we'll get, okay. we'll get to that. Uh, that. That's around 2014, actually, when Guitar Center becomes a, a partner. God, yeah. they I mean, I think of being 2001, 2002, like I was pretty young. I was like 11 or 12 years old and they um uh, and going to Guitar Center all the time. But boy, that circle of, you know, five star drum shops must have really been, you know, feeling the burn from Guitar Center in those days. That must have been kind of a big topic of how do we keep this massive shop, which now Guitar Center's in trouble, <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. kind of changed. But talk about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'm getting ahead of ourselves. So, no, that's so back okay. On, that's yeah. okay. Um, so yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit. But yeah, just from being at the, again, Zampino's drum shop being a small mom and pop sh- shop, you know, even though we had a lot of inventory, and a lot of students base were threatened by at the time, you know, from these musicians friend and guitar center, because we had customers coming in, and they were always price comparing and, hey, can you I got the catalog? Can you beat this price? Hey, can you do this? And we would often match that or beat it even because yeah. you know we we needed the business and they would come to us uh t- to tune drums and stuff like that back then mm-hmm. you know they get their stuff so personal customers you know we wanted to you know keep that acquisition um yeah for sure but yeah it, moving forward uh i just want to talk about let's go into 2004 here and so now what we're doing is we have the Logics pad, we have the rim. We're going to now recess the rim into the wood. Hmm. And so what we, you know, we have CNC milled groove that the rim now would set in to be, in, to make more strength and strong and, you know, let uh, reside into the base for rim shots and cross sticks and things like that. And yeah. in doing so, um, Russ Miller I want to talk about Russ because Russ was also from Zampino's drum shop back in the day. He was a student. Hmm. And so through his travels and coming through town and doing clinics, I I spoke with him about, hey, would you like to be involved and how can we work together? And I wanted to create a pad at that time, like for brush playing. So how can we, I want to make a pad that you can play brushes on and sticks because there was nothing like that out there. And he's like, that's a great idea. Let's do that. You know, so we kind of put our heads together and came up with some different materials where we would also have a mute that laid inside the pads. So you had a natural rubber surface, a rim, a blue at the time. These, it was a red surface at the, and the surface that laid inside that was quiet mute was blue. And we had a fiber skin surface that we, that I purchased from Remo and hmm. they were inking Prologics on it. And that wow. was our. So that's your texture for the brush to get a little. Right. That was the first texture. Up. And today we use our own technology, uh, white textured surfaces. But it hmm. first, I think 150 pads, and Russ signed all these uh, surfaces. Cool. Fiber skin. To, I shipped them to him and he shipped them back. And that's how we got the all in one pad started. That was called the all in one. It still is today. And the all in one is a very unique pad, and it's one of our best sellers to this day. Um, from 2004 and wow. what we also, what I wanted to do with that pad was also have it sit on top of a snare drum. So it's got a 14 inch hoop groove that's milled out underneath. So a lot of pads, you know, get set on top of the drum and you're actually playing the drum, then you're playing the stand and so on. So by resting it on the hoop provides solid rebound and your, you know, strokes come back it's a more natural way and you also get that subtlety of the snare response underneath the drum you can adjust the snare wires and hmm. because the drum pad is just hovering above the drum head wow so with that pad we won best in show at nam 2013 cool uh nine years later and also we won best in show for 2016 at nam show for our pad collection our resistance training series at that time man 
That had so, to feel just like awesome to win that. <laughs> I mean, to win Best in Show at Nam. Yeah, man, was, you must have been happy. One time, yeah, one of those years, I I didn't attend the meeting because again, it was just me and my other employee. We were just in the booth, and somebody came by and was like, "Hey, congratulations on Best in Show." I was like, "What'd you say?" <laughs> uh, and so, like, wow, all right. And they brought the award by you know later in the afternoon. So very thankful for that. Just you know, goes to show that like, with anything you can put your mind to and it can make make it happen and i'm i'm proud to have uh, yeah. received that type of award which helped us in advertising and getting into some more shops too also i want to say by while attending the nam show uh, i would like to think his name was terry loose and he had a company called power wrist builders mm-hmm. and they were weighted drumsticks i'm sure most people listening May have seen Terry in, in the day and understand what these these sticks were, and he needed pads that were able to withstand these these weighted sticks, and they were of different diameter and different weights, and you would just use them on the pad only. And so he approached me one day about using ProLogix pads in the booth, and I want to the reason I think reach out to uh, like to commemorate him with, for this because and make awareness of, of Terry's because he had invited me to bring pads to Nam. It didn't, I offered to pay for part of the booth and everything. And he's like, don't worry about it. Just, just hmm. bring some pads and you can set up here, put your banner up here. Wow. And by doing so, that's what helped us get into the international market. Or really. So I, I nice. Want, you know, Terry's not with us anymore, but I, I just wanted to mention him and, and yeah. give thanks to Terry Luce. Man, that's uh, awesome. I mean, you took the opportunity and you seized it and you went. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about the international thing. How because there's a lot of drummers all over the world. Yeah. So our first international distributor is Japan. And that's Pad Corporation. And um uh, he's a he's a great guy. He buys, you know, a good amount of pads every year. Um, he's a great customer to work with. And he distributes those into the you know Japanese market. From there we had Italy. Um, we, we work with as OMAP and OMAP distributes our pads in Italy, um, mm. all probably since 2000, I want to say 12 and Japan since 2010. And so mm. I'm very awesome. fortunate to have that. And, you know, as time has gone on and you go to NAM and I did that again with Terry for probably a couple of years until I established, you know, was able to finance my own booth. And I just start off small, you know, with a small booth and just go there and be there and, and represent your brand and your product and believe in what you're doing. Yeah, um, for sure. One of the years what Terry would have in the booth at the time, uh, Louis Belson was when he was cool. alive, uh, was also in the booth because his wife was there selling his uh, records, you know. So I was like, be standing there playing on the pads. Here comes Louis. They're like, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, so it was, pretty, awesome. it was pretty cool. Yeah, he's a big Remo guy, though. So I wonder if he was right. like, "I'm not, I'm not allowed to like your pads. I have to like Remo <laughs> pads." <laughs> yeah, you get that a lot. Like from through the all the years, you know, everybody would be with a different company, and they would stop by still and check out your stuff and tell you what they thought of your products and they enjoyed it. And but you yeah. know, things they were obviously endorsed with other brands, which is fine. But I just like yeah. to get the feedback from everybody because that's how you continue to create oh, yeah. and develop. For sure. Oh, their products, you know, that's yeah. And uh, Louis famously a nice guy. Um, so I'm sure he was very complimentary and, and loved it. Oh yeah. He was a true gentleman as well. Just like yeah. Jim. Um, so that's how, you know, the, uh, the NAM show is a, is a great opportunity to, to build your international business, uh, as far as that goes and, you know, make sure though, that when you're doing that and you're ready for that stage and you, that you can deliver the product because, that's a whole other level besides the, the U.S. here in domestic. Um, so being able to keep it, the orders moving to them and delivery and your raw materials and all these things together, your suppliers, who you trust, your suppliers. So, um, you know, that's just some important facts as, as you're growing that uh, international side of your business. Yeah, because, so, man, you're got, you've got shipping. I'm sure that the level of... Uh, I'm sure the level of stress went up a little bit from making a nonagon uh, pad in your garage <laughs> went oh, up yeah. when you're dealing with people in Japan and right. Italy. 
So uh, I'm sure it was a you're you're a businessman at that point. Well, and with that said, yeah, I totally agree. Um, but I was around 2000, what's nine and ten, like I was saying. But with that, what was interesting that they were interested in was these other pad surfaces that I kind of came up with just by putting things together that we were already using uh, as far as materials, and that's going to be our red storm and our blue lightning surfaces. Hmm. And so. What the Red Storm is, is it's, it's a, a dual density pad technology, meaning there's two layers of material. So back then on the bottom of our pads, in most pads today, it's like a soft, open cellular, rubber, anti-skid surface. Well, I kind of just laid, while I was building pads one day, I laid a piece of red material, rubber, natural gum rubber, on top of the open cell rubber. And I thought, wow, this is interesting. It's pretty soft. It's a, it still has a, the gum rubber feel, but maybe people like this. Maybe they won't. I don't know. Well, the only way to know is to create one. Again, I would bring it to the shop, ask the guys, hey, what do you think of this? Well, that's pretty cool. You know, I like that it, the bead gets of the stick gets absorbed into the material and the pad a little more. It gives you more of a realistic drum head surface. Yeah. I said, okay. And then we had blue lightning, which is our, I was layering a, a two pieces again of material to create a soft, more of a, a low volume practice pad that we were going for. And mm -hmm. so with that, uh, I mean, the blue lightning and the red storm, those are two of our best sellers still to today, you know, today, yeah, which today. I've got the blue one. I've got the blue in my hand. I mean, they're, there you go. um, I love that they're like, let's be honest here. It makes you think of Jim Chapin playing a pad while you're sitting there with a band pads can be loud. So you don't always want da, 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 da. So you, really thinking of low volume pads is kind of important because it can right. be annoying. Even if you're for other drummers, it's like, Oh my God. Like, right. Well, in small, <laughs> crazy. you know, if you live in small living spaces, apartments, yeah. uh, your wife, girlfriend, family, yeah. you know, uh, kids, babies, like yes. Mark has here, you yeah. know, you have to be <laughs> you're waking the baby. Shut up. Get the low, get the, get the low volume. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, having that, you know, Put into place by coming up with the red storm and blue lightning really kind of took us to another level and in, uh, in the marketplace um there was a lot of interest for that and that was really introduced about 2006 but it wasn't if i just wanted to mention that was something that when i went to nam at that time they haven't seen that before and that was something that grew great interest for our overseas customers so yeah <clears throat> next i want to talk about is the uh, the Ostinato pad by Johnny Rab. This is 2010. Now, Johnny Rab and I have known each other since 2002, similar to Russ. I've known him 20 plus years as well. And I met Johnny at a, he came to Zampino's and did a clinic. And at the clinic after it was over, I, I said, Hey, I'm making these pads. You want to check this out? So I gave him a pad. It was black, red surface, white rim. And he was using it all the time and loved the pad. And so we decided to create something called an ostinato pad because he had the freehand technique and mm -hmm. you know, all the other things that go with that and yeah. uh, world records for fastest <laughs> singles and all that. Yep. So I really admire Johnny before his um, entrepreneurial ship. Same with Russ. Both of those guys have, are great business people, entrepreneurial minded creatives. Um, and great musicians and drummers yeah, for sure um, as well. So what we wanted to do was create something that we could play ostinatos on in almost like a kit in a kit way. And so we came up with the right and left side on a pad of ellipses. But the very first model I designed, actually the ellipses popped in and out. You could hmm. pop the, it was a recessed wood uh, joint that allowed this to happen where you could flip it over and you actually had four surfaces that interchanged. Wow, so it's a pretty interesting pad. And I had some grooves in the one side, almost like a Guiro type of mm -hmm. sound you could create. Cause he was always a, a very forward thinker in sounds. And I wanted to uh, have something, you know, designed in that way for him. But today the ellipses are, are they don't move. They're permanent. And they're made of recycled material. So you can play right and left hand cymbal patterns or accent patterns. And it's a great, you know, great pad. It's called the Ostinato pad. So that was launched 
in 2010. And following that, I want to talk about, we started coming into the marching market. And so at this time, we start making a marching base practice pad and zone tenor pads. They had recessed rims. Um, we were the first company in the industry to put rims on tenor pads. I just want cool. to say that. And going from there, we then had our core pads for the, for the marching world. They were laminated practice surfaces because they got to have that great articulation. Today, we don't use laminates anymore uh, just because of the different stick beads and types of manufacturers that are out there. I, in my opinion, I feel that laminates uh, always had to be replaced. They mm-hmm. were expensive to work with. Um, yeah. And so I wanted to create a surface that or offer a surface that didn't involve a laminate that you could still get that, that feel from what we have right now is we call it vortex and vortex is a recycled rubber. It's about eight millimeters in gauge and thickness and it's for articulation has a light wax finish. Um, and you can practice and build your chops on it. I'm not hmm. going to say it's not super hard, but it is hard. The hardest surface we offer in our line. Yeah. Um, hmm. We are working on other things as I speak that will be uh, offered in the marching industry soon. And, That's but cool. I've been working on that for a couple of years. So a lot of things take time and I want to make sure wh- whatever we put out is always going to be something that is of value and, yeah. you know, be people to enjoy their practice experience. That's, that's yeah, the main thing. That's extremely clear with all of this. Just even with like the little notched bits where your snare, you know, you sit in your snare basket and all of this is like, I think you are one of those people who thinks about the experience all the way through, not like, you know, with the history of practice pads, I feel like a lot of them were like, take a strip of leather, glue it onto a piece of wood, tilt it up a little bit and go have fun. You know, like it's, it's very um, progressive and forward thinking. And the, the marching industry is obviously very, uh, that's a, that's a whole world with schools and all that stuff. So I'm sure if you get into some of the schools, that's gotta be a good, uh, good for business is to get, is that how that works? Where like you would say like blank school, let's say university of Cincinnati. I don't know that if they're a pro logic school, but if it was like, yeah, we're all, but we're going to buy 400 of them now. Is that typically how that works or is it up to the students to buy? Uh, it depends on the school system. So our education from Prologis, we um, are looking to um, we'll build an, a platform, which will be a complement our educational products, you know, and do like streaming and masterclass. But as far as for schools go, we do have a education partner program that we offer. You can see it on our website right now where we, cool. where we actually do have um, some colleges, you know, we're working with some high schools and things of that nature in which we provide them product, you know, to put in their lesson rooms and facilities. And I want to, um, we have Joliet Junior College and Kent State University and USC Thornton. And we're cool. actually, we're just speaking with Berkeley. So nice. we're, we will supply practice pads to the the lesson rooms and classrooms. And we offer uh, also some once some promo codes for students to take advantage of to purchase pads and product direct from our website and support of them for education That's and the awesome. drumming community. Yeah. Yeah. Use what you use at school, take it home, use that. Um, and then you build those relationships for, you know, they, they're comfortable with it and then they become teachers and then they recommend it and right. And all that stuff. Well, to add to that, I do want to say just by talking about education and teachers and we're talking about practice pads, I feel that most every practice pad has been created by uh, some form of educator or teacher in the industry. Um, True. And so again, because we're all creative thinkers out there that, want to build a better product, you know, because we're experiencing this product. It could be sticks, it could be pads, it could be drum heads or cymbal companies or drum companies, you know, all these things that people do within within their entrepreneurial spirit to bring to the market. Yeah. Yeah. And you fit right in there. All right. So for the sake of time here, let's yep. zoom forward just a little bit here and um, kind of uh, 
you know, basically hit on how you, you, I mean, you guys grew a lot from that. I think we were kind of around. So you said you won best in show 2013 and I see 2016, but let's sort of um, scooch forward and talk about how you became where we are today. Um, Obviously hit on some key points along the way there. Yeah, sure. One more thing with raw materials I want to touch on and it's really helped us with our growth again is by creating our own recipe to practice on. It's not, we don't just go to a source and buy rubber off the shelf. Uh, it's all made, you know, custom. Oh, cool. That's good to know. To, to the, so that way you can, you have the ultimate rebound feel buzz stroke, especially with like our green logic series. I just want to mention that. Um, so we came out with that in 2017 and, um, I just wanted to touch on that real quickly. Yeah, for and sure. Again, some other things that makes us different from everyone else is the the, the VST, the variant surface training. That's mm-hmm. been a great success for us. Uh, that involves our red storm, blue lightning, and blackout pads that we sell today. And all of this can be seen on YouTube. We just did actually brand new product videos nice. within the last month. So please go check those out been wanting to do yeah. that for a long time. I'm very you proud, have to. proud I mean, of the work there. You can see all the construction and all the call outs are there. Cool. Um, our website is www.prologicspercussion.com. We're also on Amazon. And what I want to say is even with last year, um, being the year it was, and thankful to st- still have our business moving strong right now. Um, everybody yeah. needed a practice pad. We we're all <laughs> at home say, wondering. Maybe it's better, you know, <laughs> what the heck we were going to be doing. Um, so yeah. with that said, um, I, I want to thank everyone out there who's purchased the ProLogix pad and who are customers of ours. I, I really appreciate that and, and value you as our customers. Again, it's all about relationships and we're looking to build this more direct with you and all the community of drummers out there worldwide because we're, going to be soon going into an education program for our uh, ProLogix team here that we're going to be offering, uh, you know, tips and fundamentals and myself and Joe Prestier to start off with and doing, uh, he's the director of our education. He's a hmm. former student of mine, but also a Berkeley graduate, uh, nice. an amazing educator and, and player. And um, so together, we are looking to put out some content and, and get that going forward um, very soon here. Yeah, so for first sure. and foremost, it's always the pads, unfortunately, came first before the education. I had to stop education to make <laughs> pads. Now we're going to bring education back because it goes with the pad. Yeah. Right? We got to have that. I mean, and yeah, I want to offer sure. quality education to everyone out there so which you do and and i also before we you know i want to mention i want to hear too a little bit about you said we would you know touch on it later when you got into like guitar center and those big retail partnerships sweetwater sweetwater Mm -hmm. you you, everyone gets online and goes i mean we love small drum shops everyone does but people get on sweetwater.com i mean i literally was on the phone with uh my guy, Ryan Clapper, talking about Pro Tools stuff like two days ago from Sweetwater, just because it's like, it's there, it's easy. So how has that process been? I mean, that's that's a big jump forward. Yeah, again, that's, it's been a great uh, process. I think we've been partners with Sweetwater since 2015. And we attend their Gear Fest. They do that every year. Um, I want to say that, yeah, the, the customer support, you all know this, but is amazing their their knowledge yep. the staff uh, every when they have events there I, I suggest if you've never been to a gear fest you should you should go to one and, yeah sure and get there and, and attend and anybody else that's listening out there check out gear fest that's where you can go uh, look at all the new gear that's coming out it's kind of like a NAM show but it, there's like tents outside in the parking lot the large tents and there's drum tent guitar tents and keyboard tents and microphone tent everything you need all outside to check out there's food trucks there's live performances there's wow all kinds of classes uh master classes going on inside performances at night 
uh, it's really cool. So if you get a chance, check that out. Um, but they've been a great partner of ours and, and I'm very fortunate to have built that again. How did, it, how did we do that? Well, yeah, <laughs> I was driving back past Sweetwater, I believe it was after PASIC and I was just coming back through and, uh, I met with, um, with them and had a meeting and we talked about how, you know, what can I do? What can I do to get in here? I, I like to get the brand in here. They, they love the product. Uh, just from us talking a little bit before. So it's just, ha- you have to be, you have to go to the place. You have to, same thing with suppliers. When you're manufacturing product, you go, go visit the facility, go meet the people, go inside and look around and see how they're doing things, how clean is yeah. it, how, uh, how their operations work, how the people are talking to each other. How are they, you can, you can feel the chemistry coming yeah. out of that, those places. And same with, Sweetwater and dealerships and who you're selling to. Uh, how do you know how to trust these people that you meet at NAM show that come up to you from all these different countries and want to yeah. sell your product? Are they legit? Are they, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're, we're also in China right now and I'm thankful for that, but that's, you know, for a couple of years, I had different China distributors coming at me and yeah, I had to do some research on that and that's what we did. We, we did our research and we're, we're very happy with the people that, that distribute our product there. And so, hmm. and that gets into all a whole other s- subject that I'm kind of bouncing around, but intellectual sure. property, no, yeah. and we can talk yes. about that maybe later Especially at another time. The Chinese um, market, I know, I mean, you don't want to generalize or stereotype or anything, but there's, you know, that happens with brands where they're just basically still your design and they're selling it right. elsewhere. And are you going to, pay the tens of thousands of dollars to litigate and stuff. And exactly. Like, exactly. I was going to say, yeah, make sure you always have a attorney who does litigation. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you got to make sure you have that. Uh, you got to have all your things in place. And you learn this as you grow your business, you know, through all the 20 years here uh, doing all this stuff. So there's a lot of stories. I have. Oh my God. I'm sure. I want to say too, that I should have mentioned this at the beginning. You sent me and Andrew, you guys sent me, um, four pads, uh, a while ago. Um, cause we've had some scheduling stuff back and forth and, and, and I have like the pads you sent me have like made me want to practice. There was a long time where I never really wanted to like, like I would play on the drum set, but I'd never want to sit there. And I started taking lessons with Barry James, uh, which I've been on, you know, hiatus from while I moved and all that. And, um, but they are such great quality. They are, I love having the, I have the four different ones. So I have the blue, the red, the black, which is like the super soft kind of quiet. And then the, obviously the green one, which are, are greenish blue, which I think you guys are kind of, I, when I, when I see this color, I think of pro logics. <laughs> That's right. That's a green logics. Uh, let me yeah. just um, clarify. So yeah, green logics is our traditional standard rebound. Red storm is the dual layer surface. Blue yep. Lightning is about the uh, five eighths gauge and open cellular structure. Um, it's a we call these our VST variant surface training, yep. and so the Red Storm is um, medium. The Blue Lightning is heavy, and the Blackout is the three quarter inch material and it's extreme. And as of in a few weeks ago, we came out with a new rim called a Flex Tech rim, which hmm. would be on the resistance. Uh, VST training products. That's the Red Storm, Blue Lightning, and Blackout. So it's a softer rim, softer surface, low volume practice experience. Cool. Yeah, what you said. I kind of made did like a <laughs> an idiot version of it and just said I like the blue. <laughs> no, it's okay. But, um, yeah, no, I love them though. I mean, they are so just nice, and I love having the rim. It feels really realistic. And just the quality, I do like having the plies, like you said. I never really paid attention to that. It feels drummy, <laughs> you know. Yes. It feels, it really feels awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that, and we're we're glad you are enjoying your practice experience. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. It is an experience, you know. I never thought it was an experience. It was a sure kind of a pain in the butt before, and now it's an, a, a great experience. Yeah, you want to enjoy to go do it. It goes wherever you go to do that. It, outside inside in your bedroom studio yeah. wherever um yeah. i want to briefly touch on uh practice kit and thunder kick so those are our sure. drum set 
practice products. And the Practicate incorporates um, a sequential mass compression. And sequential mass compression, what that means is obviously sequential. Things are in consecutive or logical order. So all the tom pads have a, a variant pitch com- similar to an acoustic drum set. And so <clears throat> what we say by sequential mass compression and mass is, um, it's, you know, I'll just read the definition I have here. It's a, both a property, a physical body, and a measure of its resistance to acceleration, the rate of change of velocity with respect to time when a net force is applied. Hmm. Okay. And cool. compression is the force generated from compressing an object or substance. So sequential mass compression is what our practicate surfaces are. They are tri density um, and they give you a, like I say, a pitch. You can actually hear dot, dot, dot hmm. in the pads and it's enjoyable to practice on. When I took me five years to develop this concept, this product, and every time through the R and D's, you know, process, as I was creating these, it was difficult for me to get up and get away from the from the setup. That's a good sign. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, <laughs> I got to get back to work. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so because I'm enjoying this so much, but yeah. that's what the practice is. Our thunder kick is for your single bass drum pedal. Uh, mm. We get a lot of questions. Yes, a double bass drum pedal, maybe coming soon. So stay tuned for that. But a thunder kick is a, a inverted uses an inverted beater, reverse beater, and we sell that with the thunder kick. There's two inserts, one soft, one's firm. That way you can try out different uh, ones and see what you like in your practice. Some people tune their bass drum heads differently with different tensions, sure. and we wanted to offer that for you. Um, we had a new branding in 2018, which we updated our new logo. We had the logo before since 2001 it kind of had a swoop under it mm-hmm. and we went to something again wanted to be timeless so you got to try to think of things that uh can be a timeless in, in products and yeah. with the, your branding um out there and we're i'm proud of the guys i have that was developed by danny lump danny thank you for that and so again team having a team of people that's huge and getting growth and and you know Getting, scaling your business. And I want to thank everyone who's ever been a part of my team. Um, yeah. Some of them were, you know, the friends and family and um, people that were in the beginning. Uh, thank you all. And uh, you know who you are out there. I don't want to, I don't know if <laughs> go through all your names right now, yeah. but I really thank you for that. It is us without you all. I wouldn't, you know, ProLogix wouldn't be where it is today. And yeah. so, and we all continue to do that and strive to be the best that we can because we eat, sleep, and breathe practice fats. Uh, yeah, that's something that's else awesome. that we do that many others, you know, I'm not saying there are others that do, but there's also larger companies. They have many other things that they do. And mm-hmm. so it, we're, we're, you know, that's what we do for a living. So yeah, that, you're uh, the practice pad guy. And and you guys, I mean, I really do. You and Andrew, I consider you guys friends. I mean, at uh, in uh, at PASIC, we hung out. And um, remember, I was in line with Andrew, I think. And I think you you were on the side. But like we were in line at the bar there for like 40 minutes. And no one was getting <laughs> served. And it was just like, what? Yeah. So we talked for a while. Welcome and, to PASIC. Think, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I think I got like <laughs> three beers. And I, I hit them behind a... Uh, a lamp somewhere <laughs> it was like going yeah. back for it and um nice but all right so on that yeah. note here as we as we wrap up um mm-hmm. so you have a new website um yes amazon uh, i think we have a promo code coming at, at our, our our listeners and all this stuff why don't yes. you hit that hit that part so yeah we have a new website again you can purchase directly uh you can also purchase off of amazon that's directly through us as well and uh we're we're, be- we're built on, as I said, always relationships, and we're going to strive to continue to do that through uh, the next 20 years or so. In yeah. doing so, um, for you all of you listeners out there, thank you for sitting and listening with us today. And I would like to offer you a promo code that you can use on our website. This will be on our site only, not on Amazon. And you sure. enter HISTORY20, and you'll get 20% off. That's great. Everything in the on our website that you Man, would like to awesome. purchase. So 
Yeah, I appreciate you doing that. It makes it makes me feel like a legit podcast when there's like promo codes and <laughs> things <laughs> like that. Right. That's really cool. So again, that history 20, history 20, folks. Yep. So thank you all for listening. And uh, yeah, but just like this in closing, uh, I appreciate this uh, opportunity, Bart, for having me on here today and getting to share the story with everyone and the amount of time we have. Uh, there's oh, yeah. um, uh, other things to we can cover maybe in a, a Patreon episode. If yeah. Yes. So, uh, f- well, on that note, thank you so much, obviously, for taking the time to do it. Uh, thank you to Andrew Capazello for, for you know, being kind of your, your yes. guy who's been helping out a lot with this. Thank uh, you, Andrew. Yep. Yeah, Andrew's awesome. Um, of course, he is always awesome. Yes. And so as far as a Patreon bonus episode, um, Jason's going to hang out and we're going to talk about, I want to hear about, so we're going to talk a little bit more about kind of the entrepreneurial, yeah, that side of things about starting this business. And, and, you know, I think everyone is besides the fact of, yeah, it all worked out great. I want to hear more about some of these, like, you know, oh man, this didn't quite work out. Or there was some flubs of like working with like, you know, when you're shipping things to China and how the distribution works, I think people really are interested in that kind of stuff of like, you know, trials and tribulations and well, as I things always like say, you learn by failing. And yes, if you don't fail, you'll never learn. That's and when you do true. fail, you get off your ass and you get back <laughs> up and keep going. Yeah. And don't yeah, give if up. You haven't failed. You yeah. haven't tried. Believe in yourself. And that's whether you're making products or you're practicing. Or you want to be the next drummer on a on a tour bus out of Nashville, or or you want to live in New York and you want to do Broadway, or whatever it is you want to do. Remember, you're all products out there, and you have to respect and believe in that, and you know market yourself towards those goals. Set the goals, do them. Have a vision first. How do you get to the vision? Accomplish yeah. those goals, and you'll. Keep you'll get closer to your big vision, you know, whatever wow. that is. So anyways, yeah, I really appreciate everybody. And, uh, we, we thank you all from our hearts. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jason. And again, people who want to check out the Patreon bonus episode, you can head to drumhistorypodcast.com and there is a uh, Patreon link there and you can join up for two bucks or whatever. And again, Jason, thank you for being here on drum history today. Thank you, Bart. I really appreciate it. And I love the experience. Take care, everybody. If you like this podcast, find me on social media at Drum History and please share, rate, and leave a review. And let me know topics that you would like to learn about in the future. Until next time, keep on learning.